Hi guys and welcome back. This is Crossy on Endpoint TV and we have map number two up and coming. I apologise on behalf of the Sevo client that isn't the best when it comes to uh, the commentary side of things as it often ends up by the time it drops you into the game missing a couple of the rounds. We see uh, Endpoint 2-2. Against CL Esports here on train. Double aught setup coming in from uh, Luzza and Pulse, a bit like we saw in the first map. Let's just see how they pan out. Luzza gets one before he is instantly traded out, and that is uh, not good for business if that's the way that they want to use one of those two particular orts. Aaron steps out and takes down Crank as he makes his way out of Pop Dog, but Pete trades that one straight back, and Mono gets a frag on uh, Mighty Max as well. Smoke over towards the uh, bomb site, and that's probably where the plant is going to come in. Two players, uh, Jakey, filling in for uh, Weber tonight on the endpoint side, and Aaron going to make their way in. That Molotov does absolutely nothing towards the drop down Aaron. Aaron gets one. So he trades uh, Pete straight out. Jakey out towards Electric Box. So he's going to try and clear areas. Spams top of green. Pierre does step out and grabs Jakey with a noise and uh, is able to get Aaron as well as he's uh, walking around the bomb site. See the Esports start to uh, open the taps a little bit. That's uh, three straight on the bounce for them, actually. Get themselves uh, a bomb plant in the uh, first round. Endpoint get the retake. Didn't see it happen, but my guess is that was probably over towards the uh, B site. Retake comes in. Endpoint get the SMGs. And the bomb plant will have allowed for uh, e CL Esports to go for uh, AK's third round, which looks like they came out with as uh, Oscar leading the charge with a 3k out in the open. Kept very, very quiet during uh, the first map, but here he comes with a uh, 4k. Potentially going to be looking for the fifth, but I don't think it's going to come. P.O. is uh, going to have to make that frag on Jakey, who uh, jumps down and gets P.O. down to two points of health, but nothing more than that. And CLE Sports open themselves up a two round advantage, four on the spin. Now, seeing that far, far too easy for uh, Oscar to step out of the mid area, pick up four players. This is something they have to be super careful of. Jakey hears movement and a lot of gunfire just above the uh, B ramp. So he's going to be throwing utility to try and slow down any potential pushes in that area. Just back out towards uh, the back of the train, actually. Spamming through, making noise, trying to deter the CL Esports players from uh, tackling the ramp at this stage. They are stacking up, ready for a pretty full commit over towards the B site. And Crank now makes his entry into the site, finds Jakey, who's uh, walking around. Luzza with the AWP. Picks up the assist as well. Pete with his AWP trained on the back of that train, thinking he'd take the AWP down. But uh, that's not a bad silver medal as uh, Aaron instead walks into the AWP scope. Very, very dangerous player, Aaron. So Pulse said he trades one before Mono trades him straight back out. Numbers favour CLE Sports as they try to put themselves uh, into a three round advantage. Oscar typing something that means absolutely nothing to me. My Polish is uh, unfortunately a little rusty. And by rusty, I may or may not mean completely non-existent. The CL Esports then open themselves up to a four-round lead. Three-round lead. There goes the counting again. Wow. I'm having an absolute shocker tonight. So Jakey filling in for Weber tonight, leading the charge with uh, six francs to his name during the very early stages of this, uh, the second map. 
Of a uh, potential best of three. Endpoint coming through 16-9 on Cobblestone. That to one point like Seal might have got enough rounds on their CT defense. So Mighty Max goes down, steps and jumps out towards the Ivy area, but they've got full control of that. Aaron with the CZ does pick up one before Pulse and Jakey go down to Pete and to Crank, respectively. Pete firing AWP shots all around Aaron before he whips out the pistol and uses those extra bullets that he had at his disposal to uh, just mop him up and, and take that frag in the end. He made a meal of it, but as long as you get the result you're hoping for, does it really matter? Well, it kind of does when you're on stream, but never mind. As it looks like he's going to fill his boots with uh, at least one on Crank. Stepping back out into B, though, and might be walking into a bear pit. He's got a player up to his left that he knows absolutely nothing about. Does hear the footsteps, but is a little too late by the time he does and tries to react. Oscar was uh, well and truly on him by that point. And uh, he is, and despite his uh, 4K last time out, only on 8 and 4 so far. If he can uh, continue to make his stamp on this uh, second map. Let's get back on the boost. Now the trouble is, they've already seen him in that spot. They've already traded him out one for one in that spot. And it's one of those where you're going to continually check it as Aaron with the uh, spray down gets the uh, Silly Sports guys one at a time as they try and uh, drop pop. 104 HP gets himself out of there. Four in point players that uh, he would have to find to bring this round home. And that's the full AK by that they're up against. Makes me wonder quite why they went like that. And the biggest thing I'm questioning is why they went in dry. <laughs> Like often, and I think this round is pretty much toast, so we can have a little fly through and, and have a look. What would often happen in this situation is, and this routine works so, so well, is if you've got the player that sits close pop dog like this inside the pop dog, and the main reason that you do that is you want to protect yourself from main. So if you sit in this little corner, you can do that. But if one flash drops, this player is then going to fall out and they're going to fall out to roughly round about the box area. So if you can get a guy inside a main, maybe drop a smoke so that you can get yourself into this corner, then you can peek and you can take out that guy as he moves out of the pop dog and tries to escape. But from that position, you are safe from the AWP unless the AWPer moves out of connector to try and protect the uh, pop dog player. And if they do that, the guy in main gets the pop dog player, draws the AWPer out. The AWPer then is out in the open and exposed for the player that then drops down pop dog following the flash out. And then that cleans up two players over towards the A side. The worst that happens is that you get a two for one trade in your favor and you completely open up the uh, A side. Um, the connector guy's out of there. You've got the... Um, main guy out of there with the AWP. The only thing you've got to worry about at that stage is the Ivy player. If you just send one guy towards Ivy, when the Ivy player is looking to see what's happened at main and pop, the Ivy player pushes, takes that guy out, and you have got complete control of the uh, A site. But instead they went to en masse, dry, full A case, very questionable. Also, it appears that Endpoint are uh, now forced very quickly onto a save here. Keeping hold of that uh, AWP and the AK because they're going to find themselves pegged straight back. Down to a uh, 14.50 loss bonus. be a, a little too easy for him as uh, Pulse. He does get uh, a little consolation or frag. Drops one of the CLE Sports weapons. 
but they've got plenty of cash in their bank to keep on buying. So they lost one. Still had full weaponry, trade it straight back, and they've still got stack loads of cash to work with. Absolutely fine at this point. Luzzer up top of the, of the uh, green train gets one, spins out, gets the uh, second as well. That's two players coming out of main, dealt with by Luzzer with the AWP, and that is a much better position to be playing from, I think, than the connector, where he's got caught out uh, on several occasions without really um, adding too much other than uh, a single frag. Not quite good enough, I wouldn't suggest. Jakey gets taken down in the meantime as he steps below hell. Luzzer trades that frag straight back. Down goes Pete, and this is is much, much more like it. A good AWPer, CT side, on train, they can have an absolute field day, but they have to be mobile, and that's the key. Now, it's very easy to, if you're a CT AWPer, to come towards the Ivy site and just sit, and just look down that angle and flick out to here. And the trouble you have with that Aside from the obvious, oh, if they decide to hit Ivy and throw one flash out and completely blind you, you are ripe for the taking. But you are probably, if you fire out a shot in that direction, not going to see anyone else on that angle again. They'll either have crossed or they are not going to cross again. I'm going to give you that opportunity to pick up the frag as Luzza with a 4K of his own following up on Aaron's performance two rounds ago and uh, brings Endpoint back into winning ways. Still have the opportunity to win out the half here. But, uh, as of right now, it's another one of those backwards and forwards affairs. CL Esports at times go for pushes and it just doesn't pan out for them. That, um, all players go down, drop without a flash to back us up. That seems to have no real direction to it, and that uh, backfired on them miserably. So yeah, Oscar draws an orc shot out of pulse before he falls away to the uh, back of a so yeah, middle set of trains, effectively. Point's going to allow the terrorists to take control of Ivy to a point. Send them out towards main, but don't let them get towards the back of the trains where he is. Jakey now using the smoke for cover. He's crossing. Crossing back, peeking towards Ivy. Needs to not go down while he's doing that. Throws a Molotov. Oscar has to push through it. Jakey needs to make that frag and doesn't. Oscar gets himself trapped into a, a wall of fire either side of him, but he's able to work from there. Luther gets the assist. Oscar now pushes out to hell and does get a frag. Pete with a double orb on uh, Pulse. Aaron, did they even line up for him? Auto director showing me uh, the action over towards the nest area, which is uh, quite crucial. It has allowed them to get access to the site. Mighty Max gets one insta-traded by uh, Mono, who's walking around the bomb site, though, and Endpoint again, pegged back one more time. Luzza gets uh, a 4K. They pick up the round. Back it goes in the other direction. Now the boys back up against it. Going for an aggro push ramp. This may actually work out pretty well if they get the trade, but no, they don't. And Max was uh, maybe hanging back. If they'd gone all three, maybe that would have panned out slightly differently. But Oscar, a completely different player, has turned up on the server, it seems like. He's not running away with it, but he's making the frags that count. 
Pete with the uh, AWP double that he got last round out. Keeping the uh, big green gun in his hand as Oscar assists the teammate dealing with Mighty Max, who is uh, up close and personal, I think, trying to uh, maybe get lucky. Aaron try to do the, the same thing, does get Oscarish as he makes his way towards upper. Nutter able to catch P.O. in a, a bit of a pincer movement with his teammate. All Aaron had to do was uh, continue walking up towards upper. I think he was pretty fast actually, but uh, no defuse coming in. They clean up the uh, remaining two endpoint players, the last two guys left alive, Pete and Crank. And it is going to be 9-4 to four then. Pete leading the charge with the AWP in hand, 14-6. and six. Oscar not far behind with 13 to his name. Jakey slowed up a bit. Oh, Luzza, what a 1D. Crisp. Straight to Dover, Mono, and Pete gets another double. He's got to stop lining up for him, guys. You're making him look good. As uh, he picks up a third as well as Pulse goes and tries to push him. Pete gets his uh, fourth. It is an eco bash. So there's nothing too much to write home about, but uh, two double orc frags in a space of what? Three, four rounds, is it? And Seal Esports on the rebound after losing that uh, first map of Cobblestone. In rather unfortunate fashion, actually. It looked like they might have done enough. And, you know, at times, uh, Endpoint looked like they were trying to uh, throw away that particular contest with some of the plays they were making. But brought it home 69. Still looking very strong. Luzza catches P.O. from behind. Crank though gets Luzza in the smoke. Goes up towards the window and Aaron is able to uh, get the frag there. 4v3 then in favour of Endpoint. Trying to pick this one up and take it to 10-5. Oscar gets one, trade is straight out. Mono again goes for it, but numbers still favour Endpoint. They're not going to push uh, the tempo too much and get aggressive on that. At this stage, it's going to be content of sitting back. And we get two players towards, uh, or sitting around A, one towards B, and it looks like they've actually got this guy's sitting towards Ivy. Yes, they're on fast rotate. Aaron, okay, looking into A main. So he'll be calling that utility flying over. He's actually picking the corner. I wouldn't have done that, Aaron. There was no need. There was absolutely no need. When he knew the utility was flying in, you knew it was an A execute. You may as well have sat and waited and uh, bided your time. It's going to work out by the looks of things. These last two should be able to trade out Mono. He's down to half HP, but no one gets one. He's got the opportunity to make the play. That is so, so fortunate. So fortunate. Another time for Endpoint trying to uh, be a little too aggressive when they didn't need to be. Just under 30 seconds left to go on the clock. As soon as that utility flies into the A, it's a sign that this isn't going to be a B push unless... I mean, it's possible that it could be a B push, but the only way is if the one guy went solo on it, leaving the other one throwing that utility into A to try and mix things up a bit. And then it would be easy for the remaining two, three players at A to just swarm B, deal with that one player, cover each other, get the defuse, etc. So there was no need, absolutely no need for Aaron to pick that corner the way he did. Just sit, wait, play for time, let the guy come out. And you know, it ends up in uh, a 2v1, make it a 1v1, and then a potential spray down that didn't quite go CLE Sports' way. But you don't want to be in those situations. You don't create those situations for yourself if you don't need to. You've got to be smart. At times, the endpoint guys, they don't always do that. It's good that they show the confidence and they try and peek those corners and get the frags, but... You know, more often than not, if you peek a corner like that, you are at a disadvantage. They are going to see you before you see them. And it's going to be a split second, but 
if you have got an M4 in your hand, they've got an AK. They've also got the more powerful weapon. So it's another thing that's uh, working in their favour. And at this sort of level, you are going to know what AK control is. You're going to know how to control an M4. You're not going to know how to control an AK. So it's not like they're going to whiff the shot on you. Right, let's not dwell on it anymore. They picked up the rounds. So that's all that matters. And then point, if they get the first pistol, push through, get the next two, 10-8. Break the economy with uh, winning the uh, first buy versus buy. And then win the eco. They are back to 10-10. Perfectly possible as Mono, he's taken down to super low. Pulse pushes through towards oil and gets the second. Will he get the third? No, Jakey picks up that third on crank. Loves a wait from behind, gets P.O. Oscar with a couple of one taps no, with the P2000. Who uses that these days? Oscar does, and Jakey with his uh, second. First round hero with the pistols, Jakey. Starting to uh, chase down a couple of the regulars, keeping himself uh, a fair amount ahead of Pulse and Mighty Max. If those guys uh, add their frags together, they will just about beat Jakey. Gonna need a few more of those in the early stages of this second half, though, to give Endpoint a fighting chance of closing this thing out 2 0. P.O. trying to uh, pull off a couple of shots with the D. Fairly effective with a gun in hand so far, but hasn't panned out. Pete also trying to do some work. Loves the trades out against Mono. Aaron gets Pete. I think they already know about the guy up in the uh, up in the window, and they do. Aaron is able to uh, flick out to there, but he's got two more players he has to find. Oscar out from Pop. I think he may have had info on Oscar as well. I think he might have shown himself. Aaron trying to get himself over towards B to get a bomb plant if he can. 55 uh, points of health to his name. Throws a smoke into connector. That's going to give him a bit of uh, time to work and just get that plant down. That's going to be 800 bucks in the account. But they love a round out of it as well. He plants at perhaps the wrong end. They're able to find him without him having a chance to fight back. And that didn't quite go how Endpoint would have envisioned, I don't think. Especially with uh, a couple of the SEAL players missing out on some of the shots that they were trying to make over towards the uh, mid area. Endpoint pretty much had sight control. But uh, didn't cover it quite well enough. It was uh, mainly the Ivy player that came out and caused the real problems. Oscar from behind out of Pop Dog, if they'd got the Ivy player, was maybe a little too, little too late uh, for them to come out. But what actually panned out with him... And coming out, he was able to clean it up in the end with the assistance of the Ivy player. Brought things back into their favour and uh, Seal Esports now go for the... Uh, well, it's not really a reset. One round and then back. But it puts them on the AKs. They've uh, picked up a couple of those uh, M4s as well. The endpoint board up into on the second round. Definitely not ideal for Endpoint. Extra pressure on him. So Oscar drops away, gets hammered by an AK, but so he's down to 82 points of health, I believe. And yeah, that's all it is. So he's got to get himself out of dodge, regroup, and find somewhere else to play from. seconds left to go. Get ready for the BXQ. That flash from Aaron's going to slow down the push. Something crazy. But uh, it's okay. They can uh, still work from that. So, oh, what a shot from Oscar over towards uh, Oil. And Pete is able to uh, trade one out as well. Holes uh, does get one and make that two with the AK. He's been very dangerous with that weapon tonight on uh, both maps. Cranked up close. So he gets Mighty Max. Pio comes in from behind though, and he's got him in the pincer. Down goes Pulse. Diffuse is going to come in as well.
And it is then 12 to 6. You're on board with Crossy on Endpoint TV. Nade heading in the direction of A main. Pretty much just thrown to uh, try and deter any players to come out all at once. He gets one. They trade him out quite nicely, though, with the digs in hand. Pulse, what a shot that is over towards Ivy. And also we'll have the information on the second player from there. That Molotov from Oscar is going to do the job. No, it isn't. Jakey able to rip his face off and survive at least long enough to uh, get out. Plant's going to come in, though. 2v1. Crank. Two players on super low HP. Gets the first. But taking down the 23 himself. Max is going to just wait for him to step out. It's not, well, it is a one dig. It wasn't to the face, but it still counts when you're on 23 points of health. A nice execution from endpoint. Set up very nicely by uh, Pulse's 1 dig out towards uh, Ivy from some distance. He pulled that one off. Pio completely blind, but able to get himself onto the site. Well, the toss into Ivy. Not into Ivy, into Pop Dog, sorry. Now gets himself up close and personal in a chance for Luzzer to pick this one up. You do not want to drop that AK Luzzer, and he doesn't. Catches P.O. in the end, just waits patiently. How many times have you seen an endpoint player go and peek that angle <laughs> and uh, walk into his favour? And there we go, standing out in the open, waiting for something to happen, and uh, gets one digged by Mono, who then drops out. Not going to be able to retrieve that AK. I suppose that's one saving grace. I'm actually throwing a flash, which uh, will completely blinded his two teammates. So, if there's a silly sports player up close that wanted to push that, would have been uh, perfectly set for him. It's not the first time that they've uh, thrown a flash down that ramp and flashed teammates with it. Jakey with uh, one frag into the site. He's got himself up close with him. Which is uh, maybe not a bad plan, actually. You don't expect to have someone uh, right up close with you. They do now. He will have been called away and throwing that smoke in. Pulse over to find Crank in the meantime as he climbs up on top of the train nearest to Connector. Well, I'm going to have to fall away with the AWP. Keep hold of that. And live to fight another day. See the end point now. Putting two rounds together on the bounce. Maybe a little more like it than them. Twelve eight, the uh, second round score. It's a real back and forth affair. This one, interesting little battle. Is that neither team has been 100% comfortable on their CT setup. At times it works, and sometimes they get completely taken apart by Maxi. Ooh, I don't know how he saw Crank, but uh, he was able to come away with it. And despite a very quiet oh, map for him, Mighty Max steps out with a 3k. Bashing these upgraded pistols. Chance for a fourth. Looks away at just the wrong moment, but is able to pick up his fourth. Chance for an eco bash, five man. Throws a Molotov, pushes through. He wants his frag, but it's probably not going to happen as P.O. walks in from the Ivy area. Just to make a play on Aaron. Two taps and he's done. Can't re retrieve himself an AK, but he will quite happily take that AWP. Thank you very much. And now they're going to want to try and hunt this. Jakey going for the shoulder peak. Not practiced in the art of the shoulder peak. He shows just a little bit too much. 
Get some fighting in for uh, indecent exposure of showing so much while he's peeking in that corner. It didn't pan out for him. But uh, Mighty Max shows him how it's done, plays her a little rope a with P.O. around that wall, and it does end up being uh, an ache. What am I doing tonight? An orb retrieved and in the hands of Luzzas. Let's get on board with him and see if he wants to go for an early pick out into main. Maybe try and take on Pete, who's been fairly useful with the orb today. Helped largely by a couple of doubles that he's uh, picked up, I think, dealing with eco bashes on this map. As he gets flash from the upper, I think quite bravely doesn't look in that direction, but <laughs> nothing comes of it for uh, either team in that little skirmish. Falls, Lazar drops a flash on the ground. Now try and open things up. Look at P.O. You can see him on the X-ray and oh, nothing quite comes of it. He walks away quite quite wisely. I think one thing the players at this level, if they know exactly where a guy is, like where P.O. was in that situation, you would favour that the frag is going to come in shortly after. And I think quite luckily for P.O., he stepped away by the time that AWP shot came through the little corner. Maybe would have only legged him through that uh, bit of metal there. Would have taken him pretty much close to the edge. As I can't see that play on window, which is where P.O.'s disappeared off to now. Pulse does take down Mono. I think he might be the Ivy player. Some ball with Luzzo at the moment as Pulse gets his uh, second frag. Luzzo's got the chance of uh, doing some work. P.O., his position will be known in the window. He's got called off and Pulse picks up his third. Jakey with a frag Nie as he steps out of Ivy. Mono, I'm trying to cast. Can you stop talking, please, bro? Thank you. Nie, jak za szybko jesteśmy right, obstrani i wyrzucamy wszystkie granaty się. Tak może po prostu the, poczekaj. Uh, I zagrajmy this, teraz dwa eko, żeby mieć kompletny full tak jak There we go, it's Mighty Max picks up the frag. It was quite entertaining leaving the voice on last time I commentated the in point game. Luzzo was getting absolutely scammed with the amount of one bullets that he was uh, walking into and the rage was kind of entertaining, but... Steel Esports players chatting away in Polish while I'm trying to talk. Not quite so entertaining, I don't think. So well, let's uh, put an end to that. That's in the meantime catches the nade. I was uh, rather foolish keeping on uh, Luz's scope throughout that uh, attack into the A main as Pulse opened up. I think there's three frags he got in the end from that. But Luz has so many opportunities where he could have uh, picked up a couple of frags. Nothing quite came of it. In the meanwhile, they've traded one for one in the upper B area. Drakey going to try and get aggressive now into the window. Just clears it out for the time being before he pops back out of there. Plug going to come in from Mighty Max. Two players dropping. Aaron... <laughs> It's pretty much the same situation, but with the uh, side traversed, he did that CT side and cleaned up four players. This time he cleans up two on the T side as they try and rotate out with the B side. Mighty Max gets Oscarish as well as he comes in for the connector, leaving last man standing. That is going to be Mono, and Jakey's showing some pretty decent AK control here as he uh, rips off the face of uh, that last guy. We've had uh, the information on where it's coming from, but you still have to make the frag and... He's almost doing an even KDR. Good effort. Probably soon to be overtaken by Mighty Max, though, who a couple of rounds ago opened things up at Ivy like a tin of beans with uh, several frags, boosting his fairly paltry total up to this point. But super strong player. And they're very capable of going off at, at any point. Stacking up towards the B site this time then. 
And Endpoint's execution has happened slightly better over towards the A side. But they have gone in and made B work. And you do have to mix things up, make sure that teams can't get away with stacking on you. Aaron looking for some kind of angle to work with. Nothing is uh, forthcoming at this point, and they've got uh, over a minute left to go on the clock. So if they want to sack this off and make their way over towards A and try that instead, then that is uh, also an option that's open to them. They may be tempted to do that. Maybe draw a player out the A site. Make sure they're thinking about B still. Chance they're doing it the other way around. They've left the bomb up towards B. Going to throw a fake over towards A. Crank gets one. That's Mighty Max. As he goes down, one player moving out towards the electric box. But I don't think they've done enough. One is still sitting in situ over towards the B side. And he gets lost straight away. Oscar is quick to come in and rotate. Aaron does get one before he is instantly traded out. Bomb down over towards the ramp. Pulse can't get it. And CL Esports get themselves 13 to 11. Finances aren't good for them. They've kept four of their weapons uh, going into this. Hmm. Okay, well, this is interesting. So, in point of 1 5 on the spin, they can. Yeah, they've gone for rebuys. They've gone for rebuys, utility, and that sort of thing. Okay, this is going to work. If Endpoint can win this round straight back, full utility, full armor, warp in hand, AKs, etc., if they can win this one back, they're going to force CL Esports onto a reset. They're going to have to eco or force next time out. That's going to give them the opportunity to get 13 to 13. If they can win the next round, that's going to do enough damage to the uh, CL Esports economy that they can bring this thing home 2-0. But they still have a long, long way to go. That's going to help Luzza with the AWP. Able to uh, make a nice little pick on the Ivy player. There's a criticism of Crank. He was maybe being a little too aggressive standing out in the open. There's no need to challenge that. And you are pretty much, if you challenge in that position, you're either going to get taken out by a couple of players looking in your direction, or the best that's going to come of it is you'll get one with the second player instantly stepping out and refacing you. And you would rather have a man down on T side than you would on CT side. It opens up so many extra angles that your teammates have to cover. That's a real difficult position for Pete to be in, having to deal with Ivy with the AWP up close without any support from teammates. But he does OK. He gets one. But uh, Jakey is able to push out into connector and deal with a guy coming out of there. Loves a respawn towards the pop-up. Aaron spots Oscar over towards the bomb plant. And uh, it's going to be uh, Pete looking towards health. Does he know there's a player there? Yes, he does. Mighty Max lights him up down to 58 points of health, but it's not enough. Numbers, though, still favour endpoint. Bomb ticking away. Not a lot of time to work with. Pete looking out towards Pop Dog. He sees his teammate over there or gets the inkling that's where he's coming from. Luzza with the AWP in hand. Going to be looking out towards Ivy. Not committing at this stage. They want to draw these CLE Sports players out. If they want this defuse, they've got to come and get it. Otherwise, they are going to be going for the save. And that is exactly it. The retake comes in. They're going to be forcing at best. They are probably going to be on Pistol Eco, but that's going to help. 13 or 12 then in favour of Seal Esports. But Endpoint looking to bring this one back and finish it in close and dramatic fashion. How many times have we seen those with me behind the microphone? Plenty in the, uh, well, in 2018. Do I cover any Endpoint games back in the 2017? I am not quite sure, but there have been plenty of times like this where they've won out tight ones for overtime or just nicked it at 1613 or 1614 uh, they just get things moving in our direction at just the right time and this is it pivotal moment for steel esports onto well it's not bad actually it's not bad for a scrub by scout couple of m4s three players for going head armor but up against an orp or an ak one shot kill to the head anyway Not losing out there. Nowhere near enough utility, but that doesn't help. Jakey showing himself up towards uh, upper B. Pete's Orp is uh, named Peekaboo Bitch. That was pretty appropriate for uh, what we just witnessed between those two. And that hasn't helped. End point, though, they take control of the pop dog. Seal being a little more passive on that. 
See that flash, pushes Pio out to this position, but Pulse, he steps out into the open. Maybe he didn't need to do that. Oscar there with the replace. Mighty Max gets one, gets two. Can he get the third? What's his AK control like? Yeah. Crank gonna have a play on Luzza. Mighty Max gets his third before he's taken out, and that hasn't gone to plan. When you compare Mighty Max with his uh, AK control compared to Aaron, it's far less smooth. And that doesn't mean it's any less effective, but you put the two side by side and you witness their work with the AK and Max is, I don't want to use the word scrappy because that's probably unfair, but it's just not as smooth. It's not as controlled. It's still effective, but you know, someone like Aaron, you witness him with the AK and it is so smooth, bang, bang finds the face, flicks to the next one. And, uh, there's a lot less wasted movement, I guess, is the best way to put it. And, you know, it's small margins, as we say. We've seen plenty of times when Max has gone absolutely huge with a rifle in hand. It doesn't hold him back all that much, but uh, sometimes you get to a point in the game where it's the finest of margins that uh, come through and how you can be the most consistent as... Uh, so I see going to be looking to take this one to 15, 12 and most definitely guaranteeing that we'll be seeing Inferno. It's Pulse last man against four. With a deagle. Chance to put his 20 ball on the board, but it will be mere consolation if they have to play a third map here against CL Esports. The uh, Poles. Pete leading the charge, 27 and 16 with the AWP in hand. He's been very effective with that weapon. Picked up some uh, cheap frags with it. I'll go lie, but also has been very effective when it comes to making picks. Two players trying to push, and maybe if Pulse could have survived a little bit, that fire would have done enough damage. He could have picked up a couple of, of uh, cheap frags of his own, but no such luck. 15 12 it is in favour of Seal Esports. And the chance to take this into a third and deciding map, which is going to be Inferno. An endpoint absolutely skin. Put everything they could into that last round. Jakey picked off early by the Orpa Pete. At that point, they just weren't able to uh, get anything going, weren't able to execute. Not playing face it, so Pulse couldn't step through into that fire, his teammate. Got to wait for that to dissipate if he wants to go into the pop dog area. Jakey, though, opens things up with a frag on uh, Oscarish. Here, though, catches Aaron. He didn't even have a weapon out. I don't think as Pete with the AWP maybe chasing for his 30 bomb in this final round as he gets a frag on Jakey over towards the B site. One more for a 30 bomb for Pete. Can he end it in glory? Here on the ladder. Mighty Max gets uh, crank with the 1D. Trying to live to fight another day. Pulse gets Pete, so his uh, 30 bomb has been denied. Unless we see another round of Counter Strike Luzza. Looking in the wrong direction, but it doesn't matter. Mono does all the work for him. Looks completely away from his direction. Picks up an AWP, gives away his position with the sound. That allows Luzza to retrieve that weapon. 40 seconds left to go. Bomb down and reachable. Pianista gets himself off the ladder so that he can engage one of these two players. Walking towards Hell into Luz's AWP. And Endpoint still fighting on at this point. Now that's a reset. Didn't expect that to come out, but the reset has come out. CLE Sports going to scrub together what they can, I think. Nope, just going for uh, upgraded pistols. The uh, usual call of buy down to about 2k. Make sure you got enough to uh, buy again next time out. Ball with Mono then on top of the trains. Up close like that, it's one of those positions where if you don't check it quickly enough, it's very easy for a, a player up there to pick up one, two, three quick frags with a pistol in hand. Bring things back into your favour. Some point, need to be wary. 
So close to taking the over time. Need to check your angles, Pete. Maybe could have got away with that if he'd stuck in, but Aaron was equal to it. Takes a hammering. He's down to 32 points of health. Luds are down to 27 as well, I think, from a uh, another exchange that went on more towards the A site as they get themselves ready for another B execute. Bottled it last time they uh, went for a B. There's a player up close. Pulse gets uh, crank as he goes uh, whack-a-mole style up towards the ladder. So Pulse can now get in and help his teammates. You pretty much cover the pop dog push. As soon as you see that player, take that player. You can then get into the site and back up the rest of your teammates and give you that extra number in there. And that is exactly what he's done. Jakey cleans up. Final frag on PO. 15, 14, it is. Overtime is possible. See these sports they can buy. They've got an all putt. Pete Gunn class cannon all. No armor for him. Looking for his 30 bombs still. Here are going to be marshalling. Warp up in the boost spot in connector in the meanwhile. Loves his favourite spot where he got caught out a couple of times. Well, they think to check it. Well, Pulse steps out into crank. You see him an orb frag. You see Max straight away. He steps out and he checks that spot in connector on the boost. So the orb of uh, Pete has to drop away, taking down to 59 points of health. The Max has flushed out another one. That's mono. That's really good work from him. He's got another player moving in his direction towards Electric Box with the flash that came in. He probably doesn't know that, but with the way he's angling this nade, maybe he does. Just waiting for information that he's going to get pushed. And it's possible waiting for teammates to uh, throw a bit of utility his way. He's got a player. That's Pete towards uh, hell. Maybe he needed to deal with that or just leave it alone because now it means Pete can uh, do some damage into a main if they want to push from there. Just trying to flush out Max with that uh, Molotov in that direction. Pete, he could get two frags over towards main. It's, uh, I know it's Aaron getting a shot on PO. 3v3, 25 seconds left to go. Endpoint fighting to stay in this contest. Otherwise, we're going to see a third map. Oscar does get uh, a frag though on Mighty Max. 15 seconds, not enough time. Luzza needs to go and get the plant. Needs to uh, pick this one up, and I think with the lag, that is telling us